In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to continue our series of looking at some of the editing techniques used in the introduction of the American drama series NCIS Season 14. In this exercise, we're going to look at how they use picture-in-picture -picture in that very brief introduction section. They actually take five videos and move them around the screen in the first few seconds of the introduction of that clip. We'd like to show you a 10 second example of that technique and then we'll get into how to do this for your own editing purposes. The first thing I want to do that helps me is I want to give an alias to the five clips I'll be using. And the alias will give me the position where I want them to go. So I'm going to click on the middle one in the top row, right click, and say change alias. I'll just go UL for upper left. Then I'll take another one, right click on it, and I want this to be the one in the upper right. The third video is going to, to come up from the bottom in the center. I'll right click and I'll simply say CB for center bottom and then we'll do two more. We're going to go lower left and you can use entire words if that makes more sense to you. Another one we'll do will be lower right. I just find this a helpful technique so I can understand where I want to position these items. Now the next thing I want to do is put three of them on the screen because if I mimic what I see in the intro, three of them come on at the same time. So I'll take the ones that do. It is, first of all, the upper left put on track three at the very beginning. And then the upper right on track four. And then the center bottom on track number five. Now they're all full screen, so the only thing I see is the one in the fifth track. We'll deal with the other two later because they come in in a much different way. So I'm going to double click on the bottom most video, the CB1, and that will get me into my PIP designer. First thing I want to do is resize it. It's one of the larger ones and we'll position it here. And then I want to do some keyframing on this. If I follow the pattern I see it ends up here. Now it doesn't start there in frame number one. It's on the screen at two minutes and one frame. It's easy to use the comma key or period key to position precisely and that's exactly when I want it to be at this location so I will click on the diamond by the position value and that will set a keyframe. Then all I have to do is go back to the first frame and it comes in from the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out by clicking the minus magnifying glass and we'll go straight down off the screen. And so when we play this, we'll see it will come up from the bottom and stop at that location and freeze there. So I have one of the three. I like it, so I'll click on OK. The next thing I want to do is take the other two. We'll just show you one, and then we'll do one and not record it. I'll take the second one, which is upper right. Double click on it again, and I'm going to resize it. I can use the scale option if I'd rather do it that way or start out that way. And then I'll reposition it. Let's assume I want it to wind up here. And then I need to use my keyframe values. Again, I'm going to move in my timeline below to the same place, two seconds and one frame. That will be my ending keyframe. I'll set a diamond. I'll back up. We'll zoom back out again. And then I'll put it up here. I believe it comes in from approximately this angle. And that automatically sets a starting keyframe. I'll click OK. And I'll do that with the third one. And then we'll get back to our video tutorial. 
Now I've placed all three of the picture-in-pictures on the screen. We'll go back to the beginning of the clip. Click on Movie Mode and we'll play this. And here we have all three coming in, slightly different sizes, coming to different locations. The next thing I want to do for each of them, and we'll show you how to do it for one of them, is put a border around them because that's what we saw in the example. I'm going to take the big one at the bottom and we'll move down to track number 5 and we're going to adjust the characteristics of this. I double click to get into my PIP Designer and then on the left side I have a, a feature called Border. Now it may be compressed like this. You can click on the right arrow if you want to magnify it. I'll click on Border. I'm going to turn the size down from 3 to 2. A 1 might even work in this case. But then the fill type I'm going to change. I'll go from Uniform Color to a 4 color gradient. And then I'll click on the upper left and we'll go from black on that one and click on OK on the color selector. Upper right, I'll go with a dark gray and click OK. Upper lower left, I'll use the same dark gray. And then on the lower right, I'll use a light gray. That gets me somewhat of a distinct but not too obvious border. And then I click on OK. And so this is what's coming in over my video, which is in my background, which I have turned off. Then I will do the same thing to the other videos that we have on the screen. And then we'll move forward in this exercise. So with all of them slightly adjusted, let's play the clip so far. And we see them coming in. I'm going to turn on my two bass tracks, one and two. And now we'll see them on top of the video upon which they play. Play one more time. And here we have them. In the next video, we're going to show you some much more complicated movement of your picture in picture. Because they have two videos pop up from behind the square at the bottom, and then one begins to overtake the entire screen. We'll show you that in our next tutorial.